Hello, my name is Chris from Cowdog Craftworks, and I am an addict. I am addicted to Japanese tools and various woodworking hand tools, and I am horribly disorganized for the most part, and struggle to make space for all that I have hoarded. Taking this and coupling it with my innate desire to complicate every build for the purpose of challenging myself for interpersonal growth, these rather expensive and precious tools end up strewn about on every flat surface in my small workshop, waiting to be knocked over onto concrete and suffer catastrophic results. I'm eerily reminiscent of this character, but in pursuit of these tools, I'm more like this one. In an effort to try and get this done in a somewhat expeditious manner, considering I've been putting off this saw and plane till build for at least two years, I'm enlisting a variety of power tools to assist. Now, not only am I a procrastinator, but I am also an overthinker, and those two traits arm and arm amount to the equivalent of trying to swim in a pool of thickened molasses. I am slow. I am very slow. Furthermore, I've never been one to be good at putting things back where I found them or staying organized. I vividly remember as a child that I had a ton of issues trying to keep my desk at school clean, and when I say a ton of issues trying, I didn't really try. There was a parent day in the second grade when my father came to my second grade classroom, and upon seeing my desk, he realized that I was just taking whatever people gave me and smashed it into the open cubby space until it was so jammed that I couldn't fit anything in or take anything out. We spent the whole afternoon pulling everything out and cleaning, and I was mortified and embarrassed in front of about 25 of my classmates and my teacher. Of course, that didn't get me to change because for the next 10 years or so, I would basically do the same thing with my backpack, jamming a bunch of stuff in there, and eventually it would peak and I would be forced to reset. I'm trying to avoid a catastrophic overboil in this one car garage I call my shop, and getting these fine tools hung on a wall should, in theory, help me free up space, protect my gear, and make it so that I'm not standing around trying to find that one tool that is probably inches away from me that I just can't seem to find. Now I did mention that I like to overcomplicate things, so let me turn your attention very briefly to what is actually happening here. Believe it or not, I have never actually done a sliding dovetail before, and while there's many a method for doing it, I opted to go with the router because of what I thought was consistency and predictability. Ah. Well, at least one fits. Now, while this can totally be used in the way that I have used this router bit to at least some mild level of success, where this tool really thrives is in a router table. This was such a pain to do using a trim router, fences, and trim router guides, but I was convinced that I was clever enough with just enough hand-eye coordination to pull it all off. Also, to make things even weirder, I decided to house the sliding dovetail in a dado, which does create a little extra strength in surface area, but also makes this infinitely harder. It's almost as though my inner psyche was determined to let me just backstroke in my workshop filth hole, as opposed to successfully completing what is essentially an open-faced box hung with a French cleat. Pretty consistent theme in this build was questionable decision making toward the end of my various workdays. It's something that happens to me quite often, but I've just never really exercised that level of self-control to stop working when I feel like I'm losing focus. And honestly, it's probably one of the biggest detractors from the quality of my work, and something I spend an inordinate amount of time backtracking on to fix my various mistakes. I took a Japanese hand plane class from Andrew Hunter back in October, and toward the end of each day, he would announce about half an hour before quitting time that this was the time when bad things would happen. It was actually really cool to know that I'm not the only one that suffers from trying to push through tiredness and sort of dealing with these poor judgment calls. He mentioned that his work began to excel the most when he learned when to stop, and that is a huge statement when you really think about it. In true hoarder fashion, I've actually had this mahogany cut off from when I did the Nakashima-inspired conoid table. I'll have that video linked up in the corner for you. For starters, I'm not super into mixing more than two wood species in any build. I think it can look a little silly, but of course, how could I resist three then, right? And it allowed me to get some use out of this locally sourced mahogany for an idea that I had been kicking around, which is a live edge French cleat. Live edge furniture and design can be a little played out these days, but what I liked about this look was that by having the mating 45 degrees for the cleat, you end up with a seamless look, and the curviness of the live edge will be dampened a bit by the saw blades hanging in front of it. Therefore, something that would traditionally be a cornerstone design element ends up taking a more subtle backseat approach.
Once again, poor decision making here. The clamp just wasn't secured very well to the speed square, so my fence ended up moving on me when I tried to make a cut. However, I made up for this idiocy by not compounding on the mistake and finding a way to use the mistake to my advantage. Uh, several of my saws require a slot that's bigger than a blade curve. For example, my fine crosscut Tazuki has a spine, and my western dovetail saw from Eric Florp has a brass back, or a spine. Also, my OG disposable Catabas and Ryobas have various fastening devices for the blade, leading to the handle, which also require a wider slot. So even though I bungled this up to begin with, I used it as an opportunity to create a few wider slots to be able to group together these saws that required it. The finish I used here is a three-part finish of pure tongue oil, hemp oil, and mineral spirits in equal parts. Nothing too crazy, and I'm only going to put one coat on since it's just shop furniture. What are you doing? Mounting something? Hmm? Mounting something? I want to mount something. Yeah. Let's get the... We just got that on camera. <gasps> Come here, kids. I don't think Love you. Love you. That's basically the build. I ended up getting all my saws hung in most of my planes. There's actually four specific planes that I wasn't able to hang, which are my Kiwakanas or Skew Rabbit planes. Those come in pairs. Uh, because the blade is skewed and they can't sit on that 45 degree bevel board on the bottom, or at least if they can, I haven't figured out how yet. I tried testing a couple off camera and they just sort of teetered off. If anyone has any suggestions on that, I am all ears, so shoot me a line in the comments below. But for a relatively simple build that I've been putting off for years, this turned out to be a very annoying project, and frankly, I hated the way this looked up until the moment I put finish on it. But, as in most woodworking projects, finish seems to solve everything. Honestly, sometimes you just need to make the thing and get it up so you can make your life and your work that much easier. Anyhow, thanks for watching and see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks.